from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hi, and welcome to the CUBE Studios for another CUBE Conversation, where we go in depth with thought leaders driving innovation across the tech industry. I'm your host, Peter Burris. Every enterprise has to concern themselves with how they're going to go about ensuring the appropriate access to those crucial applications that run the business. This is especially a key question in domains where the applications are a seminal feature of the operations. How can we set up IT so users see what they should see, can access what they can access, and that we have control overall about how these systems work? Now to have that conversation, we're here with Tony Ferguson, an IT infrastructure architect at Man Energy Solutions. Tony, welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, thank you. So Tony, before we get into this crucial question about the appropriate level of visibility and the need for security between people, mm -hmm. users, and applications, tell us a little bit about Man Energy Solutions. Yeah, so we're a, a German-based company. Um, I'm working out of uh, Copenhagen, um, but we're part of the Volkswagen Group. Um, we have uh, 16,000 users globally um, across uh, 100 locations. Um, our company, uh, we, we make large diesel engines. Um, we also make uh, smaller versions uh, in, in our German factory. Um, and uh, yeah, in our company, we have a of course, a lot of I IoT um, on the actual engine. Um, and of course, we have corporate IT. And my job is uh, to secure all of this uh, infrastructure. So specifically, some of these big diesel engines, as I understand, are being placed in locations and use cases that have an absolute requirements for security. For example, uh, driving a ship. <laughs> uh, is a major feature of the way that your engines are being used within the world. Is that, have I got that right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And uh, yeah, and, and then the scale of this, uh, you know, the number of engines and the number of uh, vessels we need to access um, and the, the data we collect, um, it is critical infrastructure. Uh, we also have power plants. Um, so it's really important that we secure this uh, infrastructure. So it's a, it's a, it's a very, it's an infrastructure that has very interesting physical characteristics, but also has very interesting security characteristics. As you went into thinking about how you're going to improve uh, the applicability of the overall infrastructure that you use to drive your business use cases, what were some of the issues that you find yourself struggling with? Yeah, so, um, yeah. A lot of issues, actually. Um, what, one of the first things is that uh, we wanted to authenticate uh, the actual engineer, uh, and we wanted to make sure that the right people got to the right assets. Um, and we wanted to make sure that authentication was strong, so like the two-factor, uh, multi-factor authentication. Um, and we wanted to ensure that the all the data between that engineer and the vessel was encrypted. Um, and uh, another big problem for us is scale. Uh, we need to scale the solution. Um, and one of the uh, one of the things that Zscaler brought for us is um, namespace routing. Um, we had the ability to uh, really scale the system without using IP addresses uh, or actually networking. Um, so this solved uh, really a lot of problems for us uh, in trying to get those engineers to all of the assets and the IOT on the engine. Now one of the things that you noted in your, uh, as you move forward was this notion of a black cloud where you could yeah. formalize uh, the, the types of relationships you wanted between your engineer users and other users and the, er the applications you were running uh, on a global scalable basis to actually ensure the reliability of the product you had out in the field. Tell us a little bit about this notion of black cloud. Yeah, so um, it, it ties into a little bit uh, around zero trust, um, but how, how, how I see black cloud and how I sort of describe it is uh, 
you know, everything is dark, right? So um, if, if there's an attacker and he scans, port scans in my infrastructure, he won't see anything. Um, so, so basically we, we reduce the attack surface. That means that there's no answer back. Um, and by doing this, uh, we, we remove all these vulnerabilities, all these zero day vulnerabilities, we remove this. Um, and in the same time, we still allow that engineer to connect to the assets. Now, how does that work in an environment that is as uh, physically constrained as you know, integrating or networking, inter-networking with seagoing vessels? Yeah, so of course, a lot of this uh, connectivity is over satellite. Um, and of course, it's across the internet. Um, so it is important that we encrypt end to end. Um, and it's important that we allow the right engineers to the right customers and we're able to access um, all these resources um, and to do federation and make sure there's strong authentication um, for our customers uh, we can we can really tell them that uh, this all this infrastructure is completely secured dark and it's extremely difficult to to come into this black cloud so you've got a challenge the challenge that we've set up here is that you've got a use case that is uh, constrained by the characteristics of the physical infrastructure uh, where the security needs are absolutely paramount and still has to scale and very importantly be evolvable to allow you to be able to provide future classes of services that will further differentiate and improve your business. That suggests that the decisions you had to make about the characteristics of the solution uh, was going to have an enormous impact ultimately on what you could achieve. Tell us a little bit about the thought process that you went through as you chose a set of supp technology suppliers to help you build out this black cloud and this application set. Yeah, so uh, we looked at a lot of different solutions, um, but a lot of these solutions were based around the old network style, right? Around uh, VPNs. Um, around having firewalls um, and around having ACLs. Um, and a lot of this is really network centric. And what we were looking for is something that was more application centric, um, something that moved up the stack and started to look at policy um, around what the user would want access to. So putting those users and applications together and create a meaningful policy based on the DNS uh, rather than on the IP layer. And uh, this was really important for us um, to be able to scale and really make meaningful policy. So in many respects, it allowed you to, not to necessarily de-emphasize, but refocus your network design, engineering, and management efforts from device level assets and perimeter level assets yes. to some of the assets that are really driving new classes of value, the applications, the users, and the data that these engines are streaming and the models that you're using to assure optimal performance of them. Have I got that right? Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. Um, it's, it's extremely important that, um, that we don't have lateral movement. Um, you know, we, we look today, there's a, uh, all sorts of wormable uh, malware attacks, uh, ransomware, and um, you know you can imagine if something got into um, into this cloud um, that you wouldn't want it to laterally move. So it's it's not just about the products, but it's also about making sure that all these assets are designed from the ground up that they're dark as well, right? That even on the engines that they can't uh, speak to each other, or there's very limited connectivity there. Tony, this has been a fascinating conversation about how you've taken this notion of a black cloud and applied it to a really crucial business case within Man Energy. Uh, but I got to believe that this sets you up for a range of other use cases, that the investments you've made here are going to offer new classes of payback in a lot of different use cases. How are you going to roll this black cloud concept using Zscaler out to the rest of the organization and the rest of the work that's being performed? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, so when we first looked at this technology, uh, we thought it was perfect for consultants. 
um, because we could have very specific uh, access policies and just allow them to the assets uh, we, we, we required. Um, but then we also saw that there were so many other user cases here. Uh, for example, we are moving our applications from our data center to, to AWS and to Azure. And as we move those applications, the users need to connect to this. Um, so we're able to have this black cloud and have the connectivity to it, but we're not opening this to the internet. So, you know, as far as you're concerned, I don't even have any resources or servers in AWS because it's black, it's dark. Um, so there's a huge amount of security that we can add to this. Um, and then there's also a lot of other user cases like company mergers. Uh, we had to buy a company so we could use this technology to, to merge another company together um, because you don't need to worry about the network anymore. You're just worried about getting applications to users. Um, so I think there's a number of uh, great applications uh, for, for, for this technology. And I really see that this technology will, uh, will really grow and um, uh, I, I'm really excited about it. So moving away from a physical orientation of the network to a more logical application and user oriented, services oriented, oriented uh, vision of the network has opened up a lot of strategic possibilities. What's been the cost impact? Yeah, so um, yeah, what's quite interesting, uh, when you move to the cloud and move to a company like Zscaler, um, it, it, they're a software company. Um, so forget about all the hardware. Um, you can imagine we have a hundred locations uh, uh, globally. So we, we don't have to install all the hardware. We don't have to have VPN concentrators. Uh, we just have to have some software on the client, um, some software, the connectors in the cloud, and then Zscaler do the magic. Um, so for, from, for the business, um, they really love this uh, technology um, because it is very simple. Um, it's, it's sitting in the background. Uh, they don't have to log on to the VPN all the time. Uh, so it's very seamless for the user. Um, and for us, uh, we save a lot of money on buying hardware and appliances. Excellent. Tony Ferguson, I want to thank you very much for being on theCUBE. Tony, Tony Ferguson's the uh, an IT infrastructure architect at Man Energy Solutions. Uh, I'm Peter Burris. Once again, until we have another Cube conversation.